Hi everyone. So today I'm going to show you how to make two different types of nighttime skies. The first that we're going to work on is going to be a version with Copic markers. And then after we finish this one, we'll try a version with distress oxide inks. And I am using the Spooky Village stamp set by Lawn Fawn that was just released as part of its fall winter 2019 release. So this is a really, really fun stamp set. It has lots of cute little houses that are decorated for Halloween. Some of them are haunted. And then we have these little gravestones as well as some little pumpkins and ghosts. And we even have some trick-or-treaters that we're going to add to our scene also. So I'm just starting out my scene by stamping all the images that I'm going to use. And then I'm masking them. And I've been getting a couple questions about how I make the masks because I don't show that part. And what I do is I get sheets of masking paper from Simon Says Stamp and I just stamp the same image that I'm stamping on the card panel to the masking paper and then I cut it out. And then after I stamp the image on the card panel, like you see here, I just put the sticker right on top. So that's how I make my masks. And I always use the Simon Says Stamp masking paper because I find that it is, of all the masking papers I've tried, the best and the strongest, especially for the heavy inking that I usually use with my projects. So now that we have stamped and masked all of our images, we're going to move along and start coloring in the background. So I'm just kind of sketching in where the land is for the two different layers of my scene. I have that upper scene with the three houses and then our um, lower scene with the little trick-or-treaters arriving at a house on the bottom. And what I'm doing here is I am just adding in some very, very light shades of yellow and then I'm going to add some corals and some greens as well and some oranges and originally what I thought I was going to do I was trying to recreate the result that I got from a um, attempt to fix a mistake that I made with another background so I was working on another background and I was trying to make an afternoon fall scene with lots of fall foliage in the background and I ended up messing up the fall foliage and it just my background looked like a mess so it was very very colorful but just crazy looking so i just went and put gray copic markers all over the top of it and it ended up looking really really beautiful i'll see if i can put a picture of that on screen so in the picture on the lower right hand side of the screen i had um as you can see there's a lot of colors poking through the gray and that's kind of what I was hoping for with this scene but I think my um, the colors that I put on they weren't dark enough and they didn't cover up enough surface area so by the time that I'm done with painting over it with the grays and the black it's just going to kind of look dark so you're not going to see much of that so if you wanted to recreate this look just looking black and white then you don't have to put all those colors on the background that I did you would just go straight to your black and white shades and if you did want to get a little bit of color like the, um, the scene with the two girls then you would um, just put much more color down before you start with your blacks and grays and you would use you probably wouldn't go high as the t7 you'd probably just go up to a t5 so now I'm just adding a little bit of magic into the air you can think of it as magic or stars and I'm just dotting on some little specks with a white gel pen and now I'm also taking my um, just clear sparkle pen as well and just dotting on a little bit of sparkle here and there into the night sky. Now it's time to remove the masks and then once we're done with the masks we can start coloring in the images in our scene. So I'm just adding a little bit more of a glow around the house and around the trick-or-treaters and also making sure I cover up any white space that was left behind by the masks. And I'm going to do that to the trees as well. Just make sure they don't have any white markings around them where maybe I didn't cut my masks down far enough. 
And then I'm just going to fix up the way that the hill here looks. And my hill is made out of all YG91 to 99 with an added YG11 for that glow in the center. And then for the trees, I decided to color them in with E20s because the E20s are really, really bright, bold brown. And with all the darkness in the scene, I thought they needed a little bit of brightness. But then I ended up coloring them pretty, pretty dark. So they don't really stand out much in the, in the scene. If you want your trees to stand out more, I would just keep the tops of the trees pretty light. Like I would not go higher than a Y23 for the tops of the trees. Now we're going to add some little lights into our windows of our little um, haunted village and I'm going to use Y13 and Y18. For our lights you could also use some like yellowish greens if you want an eerie glow coming from your house. You could use some blue violets as well if you want another type of eerie glow or some orange as well. So lots of different options I think. I would just try to stick to coloring the windows in the house is all the same color just to keep a little bit of consistency across your scene especially if you're coloring your houses in different colors like I am here. So for the, the house colors I'm using I'm using some of my duller shade of Copric markers so for the middle house we're going to use some blue greens in BG 72 to 78. On the left those were BV the BV 20 series for the purple house that combination of Copics is also extremely co close to the cool grays. So if you have cool grays, you probably don't need to get the BV20s as well. For this pink house on the right, we're going to use RV91 to 99 for this little um, for this little house. And I really like the way these three color families play together. So between the the blue G, the BG 70s and the RV 90s and then the BV 20s or C 1 through 9 whichever you choose to use for that I like I like that um, for this house in the front I'm gonna color him in with some bolder brighter Copic marker so we're gonna use BG 02 BG 07 and BG 09 and the reason I'm making this house brighter is because it's towards the front of the scene and it's closer to us so we would be able to see the colors a little bit better. For the pumpkins, I'm gonna color them in with YR04 and YR09. And then we're gonna give them some yellow green leaves as well. And then add a little bit of shadow on the pumpkins with YR18. I do plan to have a separate video um, coming up sometime in the next couple of weeks just on coloring pumpkins since we're all getting ready for fall and pumpkins are one of the main images I think for fall and they're a lot of fun to color and um, there's lots of ways that you can color pumpkins to make them look really whimsical or realistic and um, lots of good color combinations depending on what style you're going for so be on the lookout for that video Okay, now I've moved on to working onto my little trick-or-treaters and I'm just doing really simple coloring here, maybe one to two colors of blending for each of the little parts of them that I'm coloring in. That probably wasn't even necessary, probably would have been okay just to color them in with one. As soon as I saw these little guys, it immediately reminded me of the Peanuts Halloween cartoon and I just keep hearing the Peanuts theme. In my head over and over again as I've been making these little spooky village cards. Now for the doors on the house, for the houses in the back, I used E40s and I colored all the doors the same again just to make sure there was some consistency in the scene. And then for the door up front, I used E20s for that. For the roofs on the house is I'm going to color them all in the same color with some cool gray tones and I'm going to do the same for the stairs. Again, just to keep some consistency across all the images so that they tie together a little bit better. And I'm adding a little bit of shading along the sides of the house and along the shingles as well. And then I'm just going to speed up the coloring a little bit more here as we just finish up the roofs because the coloring is pretty much all the same. Just putting a little bit of shadow on the edges of the roofs. 
and leaving the centers pretty light just to make it look like the the um, shine from the moon is is hitting the houses a little bit for the tombstones we're going to color them in with our toner grays and I'm trying to leave them a little bit light just because there is a lot of darkness in the scene and I want them to stand out a little bit adding some white highlights with a gel pen to the houses and to the little tombstones and then to the pumpkins and the leaves and to the chimneys as well And then once we are done, I'm just going to reinforce that shadow at the bottom of the scene with some black. And now it is time to stamp on our greeting. And the greeting that we're going to use for this card is Ghostly Greetings. And that is part of the Spooky Village stamp set. And then we're going to attach the whole card panel to an A2 size card base. And then I started to put some glaze pen on the eyes of the ghost didn't like how it looks so I just stuck with the doorknob so the doorknobs are the only thing that have black glaze pen and two of the ghosts in the upper left hand corner so that is card one so let's move on to our distress oxide version so for the distress oxide ink version I thought I'd use some colors that we don't typically associate with Halloween just for fun so I'm going to start by adding some spun sugar distress oxide ink to the center of the scene. That's where if I were to add a moon, that's where I would add it. I thought it would be nicer just to have like a little bit of a halo of, of, of light in the center of the scene instead of an actual moon. And then I added some shaded lilac after the pink and now I'm adding the chip sapphire, which is pretty dark. And then I'm just going to keep blending everything together until I get it to look like there's a little bit of a moon glow in the background. And I want to darken up the size of my scene, so I'm going to use some black soot distress ink. I don't have the oxides for this, so I'm just using my regular distress ink here. And I'm using the Tailored Expressions blending brushes. And honestly, I don't, I can't tell the difference between the craft brushes and the $5 makeup brushes on Amazon. So if you want to save yourself some money, I think it's fine to get the, the makeup brushes. Um, all right. So I'm adding some shimmer mist here. This is the Hero Arts Shimmer Mist. I don't have my Lawn Fawn Star Liquid Stardust yet. That should be arriving in the mail in a few days. So I just used my Hero Arts Shimmer Spray and that worked fine. And now we're going to add some distress oxide inks to the road here and I'm using hickory smoke and then some black soot on the edge. I think when I started, I, I started with pumice stone and decided it wasn't the right color. So just went over it with the darker hickory smoke. And now for the bottom, we're gonna use some twisted citron in the center and then some peeled paint. And then also, I think that was something olive as well. And these Distress Oxide in colors are pretty close to the YG 91 to 99. So if you compare the green on this card to the green on the Copic version, they look pretty similar. So now I'm going to take off the masks and being careful here because I did spray some water and some mist on it, which is going to make the masks a little bit finicky and a little bit harder to pull up. But the Simon Says stamp masking paper is magic and I don't tear any of the paper while I pull up these masks. Okay, so since we already did a lot of coloring in for the first card, I cut that coloring out and we're going to get right to the interactive mechanism. So we're going to make it look like there is a row, that there is a little line of trick-or-treaters and they're making their way down the street house to house. And I'm using the Let's Toast pop-up add-on to make our little track in the road. And the track is pretty small, so we're gonna have to die cut it several times to get across the page. So I ended up doing it, I think, four times to get all the way across the page. And you're gonna see in a second that my third um, little die cut is a little bit uneven. So if you do this yourselves at home, just try to make sure that you make your track as even as possible and try not to be sloppy like my track is going to get. It's still going to work just fine, but it'll work. It'll 
the mechanism will slide back smoother if you get a, a nice straight line. Okay, so these are the other die cuts that we're gonna need to finish our interactive mechanism. I'm just gonna cut all those out. And I have a more detailed video on the Let's Toast popped up, pop up if you don't follow everything I'm doing here and you wanna understand how to use this interactive die a little bit better. So I'm just folding all of the pieces together pressing them down with a bowl and folder to make sure I get a good crease. And then we're gonna place our little trick-or-treaters on top to get a sense of how much we need to cut off our mechanism. So I'm gonna cut this down so that it, there's only about a quarter of an inch sticking up on either side. And then I'm gonna push it through the front. And again, I have a more detailed video explaining exactly how to do this if you're not following along. And then I'm gonna add one eighth of an inch score tape on either side of that interactive mechanism. And then I'm gonna attach our, my little trick-or-treaters to the top of it. So I had to cut down the mechanism a little bit just to make sure none of the, um, none of the paper poke through the trick-or-treaters because they're pretty small. And then my little lever was too short. The die itself is too short. So I just had to make a longer one. And to do so, I just added another piece of cardstock over the original lever, making sure that it pops out on the side. This is the track that you add just to keep the mechanism or the lever stable. And again, see my other video if you want more information on exactly what I'm doing here. And then I'm just gonna seal the track. I'm gonna add the little decorative element on the edge here. This is just a little arrow letting the recipient know to pull the lever to the right. And then I'm just gonna add a little white arrow in the center. I'm gonna pop everything up on two layers of foam tape to make sure that we have room for the little interactive lever to function. And then I'm gonna paste or tape everything to my card base. And this is Narwhal cardstock by, by Lawn Fawn. And then there it is. So there's my little lever on the side. And there are my little trick-or-treaters. There they go, going house to house, looking for treats. So that's all I have for you today, everyone. I'd love to hear in the comments whether um, you intend to make either of these cards and also what other cards you're thinking of making for the Spooky Village stamp set. Thanks so much and I will see you again soon in the next video.